In this video, we're going to talk about metallic bonding and why metals conduct electricity. Metallic bonds are basically covalent bonds. The atoms in a metal share electrons. So let me give you a visual illustration. So let's say these are some atoms in a piece of metal. Now the metal cations are surrounded by valence electrons. And what you need to understand is that the valence electrons inside a metal are free to move. And not only that, but they are shared among many metal cations. And so in that sense, metallic bonding is a form of covalent bonding. Because anytime electrons are being shared between atoms, that's covalent bonding. But this is different from the covalent bonds that we see in molecules. Because this electron here is not just shared between two atoms. In fact, it can be shared among thousands of atoms. And so this model is known as the electron C model. The metal cations are surrounded by a C of valence electrons. Now what you need to understand is that the valence electrons are free to move. They're said to be delocalized. When you hear the word delocalized, what do you think of? What does that mean to you, delocalize? What do you think the word localized mean? Something that's localized can stay only within its local environment. Core electrons are localized. The core electrons are not free to move. They have to stay in their local environment. So they have to stay attached to the atom that they're associated with. So they're stuck to the atom. They're bound to it. A delocalized electron or advanced electron, they're free to move. They're not stuck to one particular local environment. They're not stuck to one atom. So this electron can move and be shared among many atoms. So it's delocalized. So you need to understand that the valence electrons are delocalized, they're free to move, and the core electrons are localized, they're not free to move. So it's the valence electrons of a metal that gives the metal its electrical connectivity. Anytime you have an object that has free flowing charges, that object can conduct electricity. And electricity is simply the movement of electric charge. If you can move positively charged ions or negatively charged particles, electricity can be conducted throughout the material. For example, the reason why salt water conducts electricity is because you have free-flowing sodium chloride ions. The sodium has a positive charge, the chloride has a negative charge, but in water, they're free to move. And that's why salt water conducts electricity, because you have free-flowing ions. In a metal, we have free-flowing electrons. And that's why metals conduct electricity. Now, it's important to understand that inside a metal crystal, the electrons are moving randomly. Their motion is not consistent. They're not moving in one direction. This electron might be moving to the left. This one might be moving down. This one might be moving in this direction. This one might be moving in that direction. And so there is no net flow the electrons are not moving to the right or the left. The motion is completely random. Now they're moving pretty fast, but they're not getting anywhere. The only way to get the electrons to move in one direction is to create an electric field. And the way you can do that is you can place a voltage across a metal. So let's connect this metal to a battery. This could be a Duracell or energized battery. This is the positive terminal of the battery, and this is the negative terminal of the battery. So as a result, an electric field will be created. So this side of the metal crystal will be positive, and this side will be negative. The electric field extends from the positive side and points towards the negative side. Now, it's important to understand that a positive charge fills a force that will accelerate it in the direction of the electric field. A negative charge will fill a force that will accelerate it opposite to the direction of the electric field. 
so the electrons will feel a force that will accelerate it towards the left because the electric field is directed towards the right. And so the electrons are attracted to the positive terminal and they're repelled by the negative terminal. Now it's important to understand that in a metal the electrons are free to move, not the positively charged nucleus of the atom. The metal cations are fixed in place, they're rigid. So even though the positive charges, they may feel a force of attraction that is pushing them towards the right, they're fixed in place, they're not moving. It's the electrons that are free to move. So once you connect this battery across this metal rod or metal crystal, the electrons will begin flowing from the negative terminal and they will continue flow towards the positive terminal. Not that the electrons emanate from the battery. The electrons are already in the wire. They're already inside the metal. Every atom has an electron. What the battery does is it creates a voltage which sets up an electric field. And that electric field causes the electrons that are already inside the wires and inside the metal to begin moving in one direction. And so that's the job of a battery. The battery causes the electrons to move in a single direction. But it doesn't provide the electrons. The electrons are already present in the wire. Now let's talk about some physical characteristics of metals. Metals are malleable. When you hear the word malleable, what do you think of? What do you think it means that metals are malleable? Metals can be hammered into thin sheets. Perhaps you have a piece of aluminum foil in your kitchen and you can see how thin and flat it is. Another property of metals is that metals are ductile. What do you think that word means? This property of metals allows them to be pulled into very thin wires. Perhaps you've seen electrical wires in, let's say, your earphones or let's say the electrical wires in an adapter. Most electrical wires are composed of copper metal and some contain silver metal. But metals, they can be pulled into wires and that's the property of metals, it's called ductility. Another property of metals is that they're excellent thermal conductors. Metals can conduct heat. So they have a very high thermal conductivity. And the reason why is due to the fact that the valence electrons are free to move. Because the electrons are free to move, they can quickly transfer heat from one part of the metal to the other part. So if you add a heat source, let's say, to this part of the metal, that heat energy will quickly emanate to the other side of the metal. So metals are excellent conductors of heat energy. Now metals, as we mentioned before, can also conduct electricity. And the reason for this is due to the fact that the valence electrons are free to move. Because those electrons are mobile, metals can conduct heat and electricity. Another property of metals is that they have luster. Metals, they tend to have a shiny appearance. And that's just another property that you need to be familiar with. Now, the melting points of metals can vary greatly. For instance, zinc metal has a relatively low melting point for metals. The melting point is about 420 degrees Celsius. Copper metal has a much higher melting point. It's about 1,085 or 86 degrees Celsius. It's much higher than zinc. Now, mercury is a liquid at room temperature, and its melting point is like negative 38 or negative 39 degrees Celsius, pretty low. Gallium, on the other hand, is a solid at room temperature, but it can easily melt into a liquid if you add a small amount of heat. In fact, the melting point is only about 30 degrees Celsius. So some metals have very low melting points, but most of them, the majority of metals, have very high melting points. Tungsten 
has a melting point of roughly about 3400 degrees Celsius. It's very high.